to Hollywood. So LA to Hollywood is a pretty long distance for a cab. So I was sitting there and he's telling me, hey, it's gonna be really expensive to drive out there to Hollywood. I was like, really? And he goes, I'll just take you there. He took me free of charge and he actually drove me around Hollywood and showed me everywhere. And I think he just saw that as a really naive young girl, you know, and I didn't really know what I was doing. And so he finally eventually ended me up at the uh, Whiskey A Go Go. And I was scared to get out because I didn't even know, like, like I, I never seen a club before. Uh, so he goes, oh no, you pay when you go in and go to the community to do. Yeah, there's this band called Penetration and they were playing. And so there was a really cool show. And I had kind of little mental issues back then. I don't know, I just felt, I started getting really claustrophobic. And I saw like everybody, they looked so cool to me, everybody looked like vampires. And I think because the trend then was people were all trying to be like Dave Vaney and you know, they'd have the white streak and I actually had a streak too, but mine, I think it was probably a trend in those days even in the rock world too. But yeah, because I had that streak because it's so weird. Because Paul Stanley had it, but then Paul Stanley had it and Joe Perry had it too, and so everybody had it. Okay, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Why was I talking about the streak? Oh, because everybody looked like vampires. And it was pretty interesting coming from my set of eyes from going from where I was from to there. And I'm walking around, I'm like, I'm trying to act cool, like, oh, you know, yeah, that doesn't bother me. It's, but I was inside going, oh my gosh, that is so unapproachable. And so then I went outside, I watched the band and then went outside and there was a, a bunch of punk rockers out in the front. And one of them approached me and was like, hey, punkette. We started talking and he was, it was either in, well, there's two bands, it was two bands. It was the Simple Tones and the Cellar Accelerators. And, which they ended up being the Black Hearts, the Joan Jett's band, which I'm getting to that right now. There was that band and that band and the Simple Tones with Posh Boy. Anyways, I hung out there and then I went to somebody else's house in the morning and then I was just so anxious to get back to Hollywood. They kept telling them that. And I remember hanging out with Snickers and Posh Boy and I thought they were pretty cool. I was pretty um, excited to know about people that were musicians and actually making records and stuff. That was cool. I got back to that area, the, to the strip. And I just had them drop me off as a daytime, as morning. And I just hung out at this bus stop. I was sitting there going, okay, I'm like at the, around the corner from John Jett's house. And I'm thinking, dude, I gotta make a plan. I gotta figure out how to infiltrate. Now, I didn't tell you this before, but the secret is I used to have a bad stalker problem. And if I wanted something or wanted to meet somebody and know something, I would make it happen. If, even if it made me seem creepy. It's okay, so I'm creepy. Actually, um... Creepy, 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 I sat there and contemplating on what to do and how to make this happen. Because I was right there at her house and I wanted to meet her. That was one of my goals, is to meet her. And I didn't know nobody but those guys and they just dropped me off. So I didn't know how to ever contact them again. And... Um... So what I did was I hung out there at that at that bus stop for a while and then I there's a store that sold hamburgers and fries and I went to that place and got some french fries and I sat there and some man sat there and we started talking he was sitting right by around me and we started talking and I told him what I was doing and he goes well if you need a place to stay I have a place to stay cuz I just what he does for a living was he does game shows. I didn't know you can do that for a living. And I, especially then I didn't know. I mean, I was coming from a different world. So he said, I'll be gone. I'm going to be gone all week. Out of all the people in LA 
Los Angeles, California, out of all the people in the world, that I didn't know anybody in this place, his wall, he took me to his house to stay, is Joan Jett's wall. <laughs> so what do you think I did? Oh my gosh. I don't have you guys watched Lucille Ball? <laughs> so you know, she gets a glass and listens to people in the wall like that. So I thought, I could do that. See if anybody's there. And I couldn't really hear anything. I hear rustling around and stuff, but but I did go and order some flowers and send them to her house. And I also went and bought some alcohol that she liked, which I can't remember what it was. Um, I bought her a little pint of that. And I think I did this towards the end because I stayed there. I was like, dude, I can't believe I'm sitting in the same room basically as her, except there's a wall dividing us. <laughs> and so um, when he came back, I just left and I, I thought on well, my plan, I got a plan at that point. I said, I'm going to, I sent her flowers and I sat across the street. There's this place called Licorice Pizza and it was right there, right across the street from her house and her apartment or whatever and so i sat there on the brick wall watching and there she was she got home and she ran into her landlord's house and came back with my flowers in her hand and she ran to her place and then her yard was two guys are sitting there two punk dudes and i was thinking well i'll go and talk to them they could help they could um they could help me out with this because they know her obviously they're at her house so i sat there for a while and i, I got brave enough and i went over there and i had that flask i mean flask what is it called a pint of whatever it was with me and uh they just looked at me walking up and i said hi <laughs> do you guys know joan jet and they said are you a friend or foe? And I said, well, I'm from Las Vegas. And I came all the way down here to meet her. And I just wanted to know if you guys know her and you can introduce me to her. And they said, well, is that ours? And they were talking about the alcohol I had. And I go, no, it's for Joan Chad. <laughs> So they were cool. They could have they could have just said no. You got to give it to me, and and but they didn't. They were really nice and really cordial and sweet guys, and they took me in her house. Who are these people, you ask? Um, Darby Crash and Pat Smear, and I didn't know who they were. I mean, I I found out about them through that. And so, as in the future, when I talk about other stuff with them, they were like one of the first people I actually, like, besides uh, the, uh, Snickers and Accelerators and stuff, they, I just saw them that one day. But these guys, they were, you know, always around. Like, I went to this place, that place, they were always there. So they, and they always, like, were pretty kind and... Yeah, I felt like I had a home when I was around them.